What are we driving? This is a Haval H6 GT. And um, can I tell you a story before we get going? Sure. So in the early 2000s, Car Magazine tested a BMW 318 IS. And it came with, it was basically a 3 Series 318. And it had like a wing and front splitter and all sorts of stuff in it. It looked pretty cool. But when they tested it, it actually went slower than the car that it was based on, the standard 318. Uh, and the reason being is that added so much weight in terms of cosmetic upgrades mm -hmm. that they hadn't factored in the weight that, that it adds to the package and then the drag. So, um, which gets to my next point. <laughs> Go. What are the pros? So I think this car looks fantastic. It certainly turns heads. It's based on a H6, which is was before this car was the Haval's kind of flagship um, SUV. Yeah, the quality is really good, like yeah. all the Havals we've been in. The seats are magnificent. They really the Havals are. Havals you've been in. This is the first one I've been in. Yeah, the first one you've been in. But I mean, the quality of the Chinese brands is certainly yeah. uh, up there uh, and certainly um, noteworthy. Uh, what else? Pros wise, um, yeah, the ride is really good. Despite all the bodywork and the kit that they've added to this car, they've they've resisted the urge to make the suspension a lot firmer, so you don't lose um, any of the ride quality. Um, yeah, it's really good looking package. It feels like it feels expensive, which is which is nice. Yeah, and um, it looks very good. Yeah, it turns a lot of heads. It's got almost got a Lamborghini Urus, um, Porsche, Cayenne Coupe mm. um, styling to it. So I think it'll I think it'll certainly get a lot of attention. And what are the cons? So <laughs> there's the right on cue, there are beeps in this car that I can't fathom what they are for. So that beep is it comes in, it warns you if you're going it warns you ten kilometers before an hour before you reach the speed limit that it's recorded. Now I can turn it off, but I have to go into the menu to turn it off. Every time I restart the car, it's on again. So those kind of things just don't do my head in. I don't understand it. I get it for the safety aspect of it, but then I don't get it. Like, let me turn it off. Let me choose if I want it. Anyway. Um, also with your phone. Yeah, it doesn't have a um, an engine or a drivetrain to match the styling. So in cars that look like this should have proper engines and proper gearboxes. So this has got a double clutch gearbox, but it's a bit clunky and it's still got the two liter motor that's in the H6. So same power, a little bit more on over boost, but that doesn't matter. Um, so it doesn't have the performance to match its looks, which is a, a negative. And then because it's got the same drivetrain, the fuel consumption isn't great. So you're looking at more, the, if you really try, you can get it to 12 liters per hundred. Wow. Um, otherwise, you're going to be over 12 years. It's more than a Fortuna. It's, yeah, it's up there. So it's it's that's a bit disappointing. It's got things like a race mode, which I would avoid at all costs because it turns the car into quite a frantic driving experience. Um, and then another con is that this car is 630,000 rand. It's about 40,000 rand more than the H6 that it's based on. And then I think they're getting a bit. Um, bit optimistic in terms of their value proposition so the whole thing about Havals was all the Chinese yeah. brands is the value so 630,000 Rand is a lot of money and it's got rivals like a T-Rock, a Volkswagen T-Rock um, uh, any number of rivals actually that that you might not get as much spec but you're probably getting a more um, substantial feeling car and you, uh, you're not going to lose as much in terms of resale so the, those are cons for me so my cons are obviously the beeping yeah. And then I also don't like the fact that everything's done through the infotainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, because I find with you, you're constantly trying to figure things out, okay? You are new to the car, but but the, I, I would like to just press a button for climate control and yeah. just press a button for, for this, where everything is done through the, which gets hugely confusing and distracting. Yeah. So that's my only con. Yeah, I, I had the phone rang the other day and I was, and I, I was went to answer the call, but I realized the climate control fan speed was up so it might have uh, been distracting yes. for the phone call but I couldn't the phone was ringing so I had to answer it but then I couldn't find the menu in time to put the fan down yeah it's it's ridiculous so actually it needs a row of buttons here for like, like my said. heated seat so every time I, I love a heated seat it's my favorite but every time I want the heated seat on I have to go into the menu into the seats yeah. into the whereas yeah. normally there's just a little button that I can press my yeah it's a bit more on. complex than it needs anyway. to be um, you've said price. Do you want 
talk yeah. more about that? Yeah, I just think I think it's a nice looking package, and I think. Sorry, the six hundred and forty. Six thirty, yeah. Thirty, and is that fully specced? Yeah, there's nothing much you can get more okay. on it. Sunroof, everything. Yeah, yeah sunroof, um, cruise control, all the active safety. Competitors. Uh, yeah, T-Rock is probably its main competitor. Um, I, I think this is slightly bigger than a T-Rock though. Right, yeah, bigger rear, rear leg room, certainly. Yeah, yeah and I've said fuel would consumption. Would you buy one? No. I think the H6, the standard H6 is probably the one to have. I don't think, I think this is a little bit above its pay grade. Despite it looking so good, I think it's, I think it's struggling to match performance wise. It's struggling to, to match its styling. Mm -hmm. So it'll turn heads, but um, ultimately I don't think it has the, the go to match its looks. Unlike me. Oh. <laughs> cool. Thanks.